Hi all, in this video we are going to see about the smooth muscle contraction relaxation. Again, this question can be asked as, not, as a short essay question. Uh, just like the contraction relaxation of skeletal muscle is important, that of smooth muscle is also very very important. So let's see what the concept is first. So we know there are two types of smooth muscles. We've got a multi-unit type and a single unit type. So how are the impulses reaching the smooth muscle? We know in skeletal muscle, we've got the neuromuscular junction. But in smooth muscle, we don't have a well-developed neuromuscular junction. Instead, we have these varicosities. Here you can see that this is the autonomic nerve. And in places, you can see that there are bulges or varicosities which contain the neurotransmitter vesicles. So if the smooth muscle is a multi-unit one, then you can see that the neurotransmitters are released just adjacent to the smooth muscle. So for each individual smooth muscle, you have these varicosities and that uh, neurotransmitter release would directly attach to the receptor. Now, uh, important thing about smooth muscle is that these smooth muscles can be stimulated not only by nervous stimuli, but also by other stimuli like hormonal, chemical or even stretch. Okay. So, we also have to remember that there can be stimuli which are going to be received through the blood. That is like circulating hormones or chemicals all can uh, affect the smooth muscles. So, see if the impulse is coming via the nervous system, the neurotransmitter is released. It will uh, it'll go near the multi-unit multi smooth muscle and bind on to the receptor that is present on the smooth muscle. Similarly, if the impulses via the circulating hormones, they will bind to the respective receptors that are present on the smooth muscle. Now, what will be the stimuli? The major effector or what happens within the cell is that there will be an increase in the calcium concentration and it is this increase in calcium concentration that would cause a response. Okay, so you can have multiple stimuli. Basically, whatever the substance is released, that will bind onto the receptor and that they will cause an increase in calcium, which will lead to the response. Now, that was about multi-unit. But what about single unit or syncytial uh, type of uh, smooth muscles? See, the difference between multi-unit and single unit is that in single unit, you just need to have a single stimulus. That will be spread through the different cells via gap junctions. So here in this case, there might be just one varicose is releasing the neurotransmitter and that would be enough because there is communication between the different cells. Okay. Similarly, it, uh, the single unit cells also can be stimulated by the circulating hormone. The mechanism is same. Whatever be the stimuli, they are going to increase, ultimately increase the amount of calcium and cause a response and in single unit that response can spread through gap junction. So this is how the excitation contraction coupling occurs that is basically by increasing the calcium but how does the calcium increase or what are the sources of calcium now that is different when compared to the skeletal and cardiac muscle the sources of calcium for smooth muscle is different so we will just see how calcium is going to increase in response to a stimulus okay so we said when a neurotransmitter binds onto the receptor there will be opening up of voltage gated calcium channels. Okay, so that will cause calcium influx. Now, this calcium will in turn cause release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So, basically, there is calcium stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So, once this voltage gated calcium channels are opened, that would cause opening up of the channels, that is the rhinodin receptors on the sarcoplasmic reticulum which in turn would cause release of more calcium. Now this type of release of calcium is called calcium induced calcium release because calcium is inducing the release of calcium. So that is one method by which calcium levels increase within the smooth muscle cell. The second method is sometimes the ligand would bind onto the receptor which is coupled to a G protein. And this G protein coupled receptor would increase the amount of IP3, which in turn can cause release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So that is the second method by which the calcium levels can increase. That is via this IP3 DAG pathway. 
the third mechanism is sometimes as i said even a stretch can cause a response in the smooth muscle cell this is because the stretch can open the calcium channels which again can cause influx of calcium and thereby cause increase in the calcium within the cell similarly ligands also can bind on to the different uh, receptors present and increase the amount of calcium so there are different methods by which calcium can increase within the smooth muscle cell so what are the different sources of calcium first of all depolarization of the membrane opens the voltage gated calcium channels and triggers the calcium induced calcium release which in turn causes calcium influx second sources via the g protein pathway that is ip3 dag pathway that can cause direct release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum third is the mechanical stretch which causes the opening up of stretch activated calcium channels again that can cause influx of calcium and finally ligand gated channels can open up and thereby cause influx of calcium so these are four methods by which calcium can increase within the smooth muscle so what what happens if the calcium increase within the cell how does that cause contraction so now we'll see what is the molecular basis of contraction in smooth muscles so again suppose this is the cell we know now that the amount of calcium is more within the cell and what this calcium does is it activates another protein called calmodulin so now the calmodulin is activated and this calcium calmodulin complex would in turn activate the inactive mlck what is mlck myosin light chain kinase it's an enzyme and this calcium calmodulin complex would activate this myosin light chain kinase now what does that term suggest myosin light chain kinase so obviously it has to do uh, something with myosin so it phosphorylates the myosin light chain so what happens the inactive myosin would suddenly be phosphorylated and active okay and once this happens this active myosin what it does is it will bind on to the actin that is present in the smooth muscle and that is how contraction occurs so one drastic change that you can see here is in skeletal muscles it was the actin that was more involved remember when the calcium binds the myosin binding sites would open up and then uh, the myosin would bind but here it is a myosin regulated one the myosin head is being phosphorylated and then it goes and binds to the actin so this is how smooth muscle contraction occurs so what is happening binding up of the neurotransmitter suppose it is acetylcholine to the receptor occurs this would cause an increase in flux of calcium into the cell and this calcium would activate the calmodulin dependent myosin light chain kinase there will be phosphorylation of the regulatory chain of myosin there is increased myosin atpase activity binding of myosin to actin myosin atpase hydrolyzes the atp and there's a power stroke and thereby causes the contraction okay so here i think um, the important point to remember is this enzyme the name of the enzyme myosin light chain kinase so now we'll see the mechanism of relaxation how does the smooth muscle relax so we know that the contraction occurred because of the increase in calcium levels which caused activation of this enzyme mlck which in turn phosphorylated the myosin head and caused the binding to the actin right now when the stimulus is over or when the nerve stops firing what happens is this calcium levels will fall and when the calcium levels fall is there anything to activate mlck now no right and when this happens when the mlck shuts down there will be activation of another enzyme called the myosin phosphatase and this myosin phosph phosphatase will dephosphorylate the myosin head so that it cannot bind to the actin but now the question is how does the calcium level fall for that we've got some active pumps to do that job first of all so when the nerve stimulus goes or when that stimulus is removed the calcium will be pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum via the circa pump that is sarcoplasmic endothelial uh, reticulum calcium atpase which will bind which will uh, pump the calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum similarly we've got a plasma membrane calcium atpase which is going to pump out the calcium out of the cell 
and similarly we've got an active sodium calcium exchanger which is going to pump out the calcium out of the cell so basically there are three mechanisms by which the calcium will be pumped out so that the amount of calcium can fall so that the mlc cable is not stimulated so that the dephosphorylation of the myosin can take place so relaxation occurs when the intracellular calcium falls and the myosin light chains are dephosphorylated so how does the decrease in calcium occur basically the calcium is pumped out of the cytoplasm via three three pumps first one is a circa pump second one is a plasma membrane calcium atps and third one is a sodium calcium exchanger all these is going to cause a decrease in the cystosolic calcium level which will cause a decrease in calmodal activation so decrease mlck activity and thereby cause relaxation now how does the dephosphorylation of myosin occur there the enzyme that is going to play is myosin light chain phosphatase or myosin phosphatase it removes the phosphate from myosin so that the myosin cannot form any cross bridge with the actin and thereby the muscle relaxes now there is one more property of smooth muscle called latch bridge mechanism what is latch bridge mechanism we said that when the calcium levels fall the myosin light chain phosphatase uh, dephosphorylates the myosin and the myosin head detaches from the actin okay but the problem is only some myosin heads will detach from the actin okay to cause the relaxation but some others will remain attached in a non cycling low, low energy state that means they will not they are phosphorylated but they will not detach from the actin so that that cross bridge will remain like that in a low energy state now this is especially true in cases where we need uh, sustained tone like sphincters and all so this mechanism is called the latch bridge mechanism so it's you cannot say that every time the myosin phosphatase is activated that there would be relaxation there might be relaxation in some smooth muscles but in others they can also go into the latch bridge mechanism thus in this video we have seen the excitation contraction coupling how a stimulus cause increased calcium within the smooth muscle cell the four sources of increased calcium then we talked about the mechanism of smooth muscle contraction and the uh, the mechanism of smooth muscle relaxation so i hope this concept is clear thank you